welcome. Thank you for spending some of your time with us. My name is Tina Rosenquist, and this is Knowledge for Wellness. And this show is to better inform you. Because when you know more, you are empowered to make better decisions for yourself and your loved ones for a better quality of life. And knowledge is power. And today's topic is on energy. And I'm delighted to present Deborah Sapphire, a registered nurse and a master of science in nursing, along with several other degrees. Now, questions we will be addressing are, what is human energy consultant? And what is energy work? And why is energy so important? Welcome, Deborah. Thank you, Tina. It's a delight to be here. Oh, and I just think it's so thrilling that you could come on Knowledge for Wellness with your busy schedule. Thank so you. thank you for joining us as well. Now, this is your first time on Knowledge for Wellness, so of course all my viewers want to know about you and of course going into why you created Energy Work as well. Okay, great. Thank you. You know, I've started really dealing with energy probably when I first got out of college was my first awareness of that. Okay. I started as a nurse. My first job was as a nurse in the intensive care unit at Johns Hopkins Hospital in okay. Baltimore. Wow. That's a pretty intensive situation to be in. Very much so. And first out of school, you can imagine my first day on the job, I was scared. Mm -hmm. I felt like I didn't know what I was doing. I was anxious. And I realized very quickly that when I walked into the patient's room and I had that type of energy, uh -huh. they started feeling scared and anxious and oh. upset. And I began to realize that how you carry your energy has a direct impact on everybody that you touch. Mm -hmm. Then I formally studied energy. Later, I took a four-year program in energy healing, which is a way to work with energy, sure. and became to understand that you carry energy on four different levels, and how you carry that energy and how you direct it, how you manage it, mm -hmm. really creates the results that you want. And so I'm really tickled when you say this is to empower people and knowledge is power. Yes. I really have a passion to teach people about their energy so that they can manage it, they can master it, they can get the results that they want in their life. And get back a good quality of life. Exactly, okay. exactly. So you actually are a registered nurse. Yes, and I am. Where did you go to school for that? I went to the University of Maryland for that, and then okay. I went later to Boston College and got my master's in nursing education because okay. I really, I really have a, a place in my heart for teaching sure. and for people learning and mm. knowing and yes. becoming empowered. So. And then you went on to actually getting more credentials as well. Right. I went to a four-year program, the Barbara Brennan School of Healing, which mm -hmm. offers a college degree in energy work. Okay. And then I took an additional two years in advanced energy psychology. Okay. And then on top of all of that, I, I also have a very analytical side because I worked in corporate America for 23 years. Okay. And so I took a very intense analytic program called Six Sigma. So I'm a certified black belt in Six Sigma, which looks at process improvement. So. I think all of those things together give me kind of a unique way to look at energy and look at how energy invested in different aspects of your life can help you create the life you want. Sure. And so then you became the actual owner and founder and CEO? Sapphire Catalyst. Okay. Yes. And I call myself a human energy consultant because I really feel like I consult with people or I partner with people sure. to have them learn about energy okay. and how they can use that in their life. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's really more of that partnering. I want people to be empowered. I want them to have their skills, their abilities, right. and become stronger in, in who they are mm -hmm. and how they manage things. Well, then they don't have to be so reliant on you Absolutely. all the time. You're empowering exactly. them by giving them knowledge yes. to benefit themselves yes. and the rest of their lives as yes. well. Yes, okay. exactly, all exactly. Right. Great. In fact, my whole mission is to spark, restore, and empower individuals oh. to be their best. Yes. Because if they reach a high level of well-being, they have a ripple effect on people that they touch. Yes. And then they have a ripple effect on the people that they touch. So mm -hmm. it really is working from the individual and having that impact outward. Yes. And that, of course, will enable them to share this knowledge with yes. any, any other person as yes. well. Yes. Yes. So do you actually have a class on this too? Or, you know, I you know? teach a number of classes. Okay. So I work with people in classes and teach them about energy. Mm -hmm. I also do individual mentoring or coaching where mm -hmm. we can take their skills deeper. Okay. I also do energy work sessions. And then just recently I've, I've added another type of working with energy which is resolving the energy and conflicts. Okay. And so I'm now trained as a mediator in family and civil mediation to help move energy in those situations as well. Okay, so we want to back up a little bit because we actually want to talk about 
you know, what energy work is. Oh, okay. So people understand that first yeah. and foremost. Yeah. Okay. You know, when we talk about energy, a lot of times people think about physical energy. Mm -hmm. And so they'll describe their energy as, oh, I'm physically feeling tired. Sure. What they don't understand is that you really carry energy on four different levels. Okay. So you have the physical, mm -hmm. you have the mental, and the mental energy would be like your thinking, mm -hmm. your thoughts. It could be clear, it could be confused, it could be fuzzy. Mm -hmm. So that's your mental energy. Okay. Your emotional energy would be more of your feelings. Okay. So that would be the happy, mad, sad, glad. Okay, mm -hmm. so more of the emotional. Mm -hmm. And then your spiritual energy is your connection to everything. Okay. And so people feel that this is a connection to who they are deep inside. It's their connection to their higher power or God. Okay. It's a connection to nature. It's the connection to others. Mm -hmm. So it's really that pure essence okay. of you as a spirit that we talk about when we talk about spiritual energy. Right. And so when we talk about energy work, it's important to recognize that you have to have flow and balance mm -hmm. across all of those levels. And you know, if you have somebody that's really, they spend so much of their time in their mind and their mental energy, they may not be physically balanced, they may not be emotionally balanced. So it's really important to understand that you as an energetic being have energy across those levels that you need to balance and flow. Okay. And I work with people on looking at that and becoming aware of that. Okay. So you look at all aspects of that person. Yes. And to try and not only balance but round out where they're strong in some yes to try and complement the others okay. yes it's really to help mm -hmm. them look at where are they in flow okay some people come to me and they're stuck mm -hmm. they might be stuck emotionally where sure. they relive a situation over and over and instead of spinning in that emotional energy i can help them to look at a bigger picture okay. to connect to other things reframe that experience and then flow a little bit easier in their life. Okay, and to maybe let that go a little bit because it's yes. called post-traumatic syndrome when you keep oh, reliving yes. it over and over and it's yes. a negative thing. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, so let's run through how energy works then. Okay. You know, let's yes. put someone in a situation that you would assist them if they kept on doing that over and over that story. Okay, mm -hmm. so in that particular case, uh, as an energy practitioner, somebody that works with energy, mm -hmm. I can actually see where the energy in their body is balanced or stuck. Okay. And when we talk about energy, you actually have an energy field that surrounds your body mm -hmm. where you carry energy on the mental, emotional, and spiritual level. Okay. And the physical level. And what happens is when you have an experience, that energy gets stored. Okay, uh -huh. and you'll see this a lot of times when people go for a massage, they might be working the body and then all of a sudden they start crying. Oh, it's because okay. the energy is released when you work that part of the body, the energy is released that allows the emotion that's attached to that to be released and to flow. Okay. And so really when you talk about the energy field, you're talking about working on those dimensions to, to deconstruct that blockage mm -hmm. so that it can flow and, and healing can occur. Yeah, and that's probably what that person needed but has been resisting it right. for so long. Right, and they might not yeah. even be conscious of it. Mm -hmm. It's stored in the tissues. They might not even be conscious. You can look at people and see how they store things. People that are hunched over or tense or stressed, they're actually carrying that in their energy field. You oh. can help to release some of that by the energy work that you do with that. Okay. Well, that sounds really important, and you know, energy is important because we don't want to have that extra stress by being, you know, right. with our shoulders right. and such. And with the energy being important, how is it that you're able to read that energy? Well, there are different techniques that I learned through the healing program to really look at that energy. I can feel it, oh, okay. so I can definitely sense a if there's a block. You can see it in how the person carries themselves. They can see it themselves. I mean. You, you often have the experience where you say, oh, that, that gives, gives me a stomach ache, or mm -hmm. you know, I just get a headache from thinking about that, or that guy's a pain in the neck. Uh -huh. I mean, your body gives you definite signals that your energy is not in flow or it's out of balance. Sure. And so it's really paying attention to your signals and how you pick up on that. It's like picking up on your sense of things mm -hmm. that starts developing kind of how you work with your energy. Everybody's different. Yes. Everybody's energy is different. Everybody's experience of it is different. Mm -hmm. We're not taught to pay attention to it. No. You know, when we're raised, we often get the message, oh, you didn't feel that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you didn't really see that. We discount it. Sure. And because we discount it, we don't trust that what we're getting 
through our senses, you know, the information that we're getting, we don't trust it. Mm -hmm. And mm. so really working with developing that understanding, mindfulness is a big part of energy work. Uh -huh. You start paying attention to where you are in the present moment and what you can do to move that present moment forward. Okay, so you're actually going to be in tune to yourself. Yes. A little bit more than how you were. Yes. And, oh, that's okay. We'll just let that go because yes. that's normal or yes. whatever. You actually yes. tune in a little bit more. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'll give you a good example for me. For sure. example, when I'm in a situation where I'm feeling nervous mm -hmm. or scared or upset, my energy goes out of my body. I feel spacey. Oh, okay. I feel like I'm not in my body. I can't feel my feet on the ground. I just I get confused. And so there are different, different techniques that you can use. Grounding is one where you actually take deep breaths and okay. picture bringing yourself into your body so that you can feel your body. You can feel, you can pay attention to what's going on here right now. Okay. You're not leaving because you're scared. Okay. Okay. So that's a technique that's it's an energy technique called grounding Okay. that we do. Now you talked about some principles of uh, actually energy itself. Uh -huh. So can we go into a little bit of detail on the sure, principles of energy? Sure. Okay. Probably the most important thing is that energy needs to flow. Okay. And you can see this in cooking. Have you ever had a pot on the stove where you've had the cover on and it boils and boils? It starts to build up and it could blow the top off the kettle. Yes. Right. So energy just by its nature needs to flow. Okay. Energy also has to balance. And so I don't know if you've ever been in a relationship where the energy is not balanced, where you're giving, giving, giving. Mm -hmm. You know, pretty soon you don't feel balanced in that relationship. Okay. That's a basic principle that energy has to balance. What goes in has to come out. Mm -hmm. And then the last principle about energy is that it connects everything. Okay. So because you are energy, mm -hmm. you are constantly receiving energy and sending energy out. Just like you're vibrating to everything, you react to everything. Okay. Um, a good example of that is music. Music has a definite impact on you. Yes. Music is a vibration. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're responding to the music, even though it's not anything physical that you're taking in, you're responding to the vibration. Okay. So energy has to flow, mm -hmm. it has to balance, and it connects everybody and everything. Okay. And there are even some couples that in their job they're giving and giving, and then they come to a relationship and they're giving and not receiving, and right. there's not a good balance there. Right, so right. They need to work on right. that. So. And you know yeah, what happens when the, when the energy doesn't balance and it isn't flowing? Mm -hmm. You'll have disruptions. Yes. So you'll start having symptoms. Okay. okay? You might feel anxiety. You might feel stress. You might start having uh, shoulder pains or stomach pains, back pains. Mm -hmm. A lot of those things, your energy is not in flow and balance. And so if you can pay attention to your body giving you those signals, then you can do something to look at your situation and make a different choice. Because at the end of the day, it's all about how you choose yeah. and what you can do to, to change the results you're getting based on the change in the choices that you make. Yeah. Because we're not in charge of other people, we're only in charge right. of ourselves. Exactly. And our actions. And exactly. So, yes. Exactly. So I do want to go into a little bit more depth of exactly what human energy is. And if we could elaborate on that, that'd be great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, human energy really is a composite of your physical, mm -hmm. your mental, your emotional, and spiritual. And it, it's keeping that in flow and balance, not just within each of those levels, okay. but across those levels. Okay. okay, so you need to feed your mind. Mm -hmm. You need to take care of your emotions. You need to feed your body. Yes. You need to feed your spiritual energy as well. And so it's keeping all of those uh, at the highest level mm -hmm. so that you reach a, a good level of well-being. The thing that I like to have people look at is self-care. Oh, yes. We are very neglectful of ourselves, yeah. especially women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't pay attention necessarily to all the things that fuel us mm -hmm. or drain us. Mm -hmm. You know, the things that drain us, it could be something as simple as clutter in your house. Yes. Because it's that's energy. I mean, you're, you're, you're dealing with that, mm -hmm. and it takes a toll on your energy field and, and takes a toll on what you, what you have to, to direct towards the results that you want. Mm -hmm. And so it's really paying attention to what is it that feeds me and what is it that drains me. Mm -hmm. And then looking at, can I eliminate those things that drain me, and can I increase those things that feed me and fuel me? Sure. And I can make a choice about all of that. Yes. Right? You know, and instead of spending time doing other things, if it is important that you have 
let's say, organization in your home. Yes. You know, if you take that time to do that, then all of a sudden, you may not enjoy doing it, but you feel so much better after it's completed. Right, right, you know? because it doesn't yes. drain you just walking around it or stumbling on it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you bring up a good point. It's everybody has their own way. Some yes. people clutter in their home as comfort for mm -hmm. them, right? So it really depends on you yes. and what feeds and fuels you. It's not the same for everybody. Yes. But it's really becoming aware of that for you. Mm -hmm. That's important. Like what, what is your energy and how do you feed it and how do you take care of it. Yes, because what's right for one person isn't Correct. always right for the other person. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Okay. Good to know. Uh, now you did talk a little bit about spiritual mm -hmm. and we kind of want to go into this as a Christian perspective on it that this energy is positive energy. So if you could elaborate on that as well. Yeah, I guess what I would have to say is that energy really isn't positive or negative. Energy mm -hmm. just is. Mm -hmm. Okay, science teaches us that energy is molecules and vibrations and atoms. Energy just is. It's how you choose to work with your energy sure. that can be positive or negative. So you can be angry and crabby one day and mm -hmm. you can be happy another day, right? It's how you're directing or how you're choosing your energy. Sure. So. Mm -hmm. And then from the perspective of the Christian look, because you're not taking energy from any other source, you're taking it from yourself, you explain right. to us as well. So. Yeah, when I talk about spiritual energy, I really talk about connecting to yourself, mm -hmm. connecting to your higher power. Sure. Some people call that higher power God. Mm -hmm. It's connecting to nature and it's connecting to others. So it's really when we talk about spiritual energy, we're talking about connection. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. good to know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you also talked about a ripple effect, too. So if we could go into that, yeah. what is a ripple effect? Yeah, well, you know, one of my favorite things to look at in terms of a ripple effect, have you ever walked into a room and you just can feel the tension in the room mm -hmm. and you've never really, you didn't really see anything, you didn't really hear anything, but you feel that tension? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's kind of a ripple effect. You're, yeah. you're feeling that energy, that somebody else has put out there, it oh. has a ripple effect on you. Now from a positive standpoint, if you are the best that you can be, if you reach your highest potential, mm -hmm. the likelihood that people around you are inspired by that and can reach a higher potential, that's higher. So that's a positive ripple effect that you can have mm -hmm. on the people around you. Yeah, and you love being around people like that yes. because then it energizes yeah. you more and yeah. then you just exactly. feel all the positive things that can happen in your life as well. Yes. You know, and it seems when we were at the Minnesota Holistic Nursing Association, uh -huh. which was great, the energy there was yes. very high and very empowering Yes, on how everyone was just at their peak yes. as well. Yes. Yeah. And so now that type of group, you want to be with those people. Yes. Yes. You know, because right. then you walk away from that inspired and, oh, wow, that person has this going on. I want to... Right. try to achieve that as well. Right, and that's yeah. an organization that I feel really good about because there's that positive give and take. Mm -hmm. You go there and you get filled up, but then you also can help fill somebody else up. Yes, yes, exactly. Debbie, you teach classes throughout the Twin City area, but for my viewers that are watching, you know, some of the key points right now of them managing their energy? Yeah, probably the most important thing to recognize is that you own your energy. Okay. And because you own it, you make choices about how you manage it. So sure. you make choices on how you nourish and fuel your energy. You also make choices on how you spend your energy. Mm -hmm. And so the, the number one thing is that you own it and that your experience is yours. So that would be the first key Okay. is understanding that. The second key is that you really have to play with your energy. Mm -hmm. And when I say play, it's like bring in all your senses to understand what the experience of your energy is. So if you walk into a situation, you may react feeling safe and confident and comfortable. Somebody else walking into that same situation may for a number of reasons feel scared and anxious and stressed. Mm -hmm. It's different for every individual. So sure. for you to understand energy, you have to play with the energy. And you know what's kind of fun is I took an improvisational comedy class. Okay. And if you think about improvisational comedy, all these people up on stage reacting to situations that are thrown to them, mm -hmm. it's really keeping the energy flowing. It's understanding how am I reacting in the moment and then how do I keep that energy flowing okay. in that situation. So playfulness is really key to that. Mm. 
And the, the fun thing about playfulness is that playfulness builds mindfulness. Okay. So the more you can bring in all your senses to what's happening in this situation, mm -hmm. you start developing a mindfulness, which is an awareness of what's going on. Sure. Once you have that awareness, you can make better choices on how to be prepared in that situation or how to handle that situation. Mm -hmm. So. And we even um, role play in our heads about a certain situation and right. how we'd react. In a Exactly. That's given, you know, you walk into a party or a situation and you're greeted yes. in a way or someone addresses something to you and we do that already in our minds. Yeah, and see, yeah. that's the thing about energy is that we do that. Mm -hmm. We've been dealing with energy since we were born. Sure. But we don't have a way to talk about it and we don't have a way to connect all the experiences together yeah. to make some sense of that. Okay, yes, and when you were talking about playfulness, you know, how is it that you build awareness with that? Well, we actually use playfulness in the class. Okay. So it's very experiential. Mm -hmm. So we will do different exercises to say, have this experience, now what did you feel? Okay. Okay, where did you sense it in your body? Mm -hmm. What did you think about it? What did you hear? How did, what was the feeling around it? Mm -hmm. So it's really starting to pay attention and observe how you respond in a situation that develops the mindfulness. And the only way that you can do that is to be open to it, right? Yes. Oh, I did feel that. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we're told, you didn't feel that, or mm -hmm. no, that wasn't your experience. Oh, that's not a right feeling, so yes. we're just gonna poo-poo that idea. Yes, yes. exactly. Mm -hmm. And so it's really being aware without judgment, sure. which is what mindful is, being aware without judgment, just mm -hmm. paying attention to what's here right now. Mm -hmm. And there's really no right or wrong answer. Absolutely you know, it's right. It's just how you feel, and to exactly. be able to express it, and to find the words, and you probably educate them on that as well. Yeah, exactly. You know? That's a key thing. You mm -hmm. can't do it wrong. You can't do energy wrong. It mm -hmm. just is. Mm -hmm. And so paying attention to what is for you. Now, you were in the St. Paul Pioneer Press. Yes. And the Open for Business. Yes. Which was really great. And when did that take place? That took place last year. Okay. So you actually started this company, mm -hmm. oh, let's say a year ago then about. Uh-huh, okay. uh -huh. And uh, things are going well, of yes. course. Yeah. And I heard that you're having great results with a lot of your clients. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I've got some wonderful testimonials out on my website with oh, their good. experiences with the energy work. Okay. Do you remember a story that you could share with my viewers? Well, I had an interesting story. I had a uh, client come to me that actually got burned Ooh. pretty severely and had been going to the doctor and the doctor really was looking at the need to do skin graft uh -huh. and had told my client, we'll give you about a week to look at whether or not it's healing well enough to, to have a skin graft mm -hmm. or needing a skin graft. So he came to me and I actually worked with him to repair the energy field that you know surrounded the burn tissue and then sure. actually worked with him on visualization some guided imagery to help that part of his body heal okay and so between sessions he would go and visualize the healing the, you know the tissues actually repairing and um, it was interesting because he called me two days after I had done a session on him he was going in to see the doctor because the burn had changed quite oh. dramatically and he was concerned about it and he went in to see the doctor, and the doctor said, this is, this is, this is what we want. Mm -hmm. We want the tissue to look like this. It means that it's healing. You won't need a skin graft. Oh, my. So that, okay. was, that, was pretty, that was pretty affirming in terms of you can work with your energy to help your body heal. Mm -hmm. I know for me, I had surgery, and uh, the energy work that I had done for me during that time really helped me get out of the hospital faster. I needed less pain medication mm. and it just helped the whole healing process. A lot of hospitals now are actually doing healing touch to help promote healing, yes. reduce the stress and anxiety. Yeah, they are introducing that as a new modality on there with healing touch and a lot right. of Registered nurses, such as yourself, right. are really, really seeing a lot of positive effects on that. Yeah. And the one thing that I'm seeing about the hospitals is that the patient actually has to ask for healing touch to provide them with that. Yeah, I think yeah. it's becoming more prevalent. I really have the honor of working with Barbara McIntyre, who is a nurse that started a protocol in the coronary care unit at St. Joseph's Hospital mm -hmm. with Healing Touch for the patients. Mm -hmm. She did research there and they found that it actually reduced the length of stay. Oh, okay. After patients have had coronary artery bypass. Mm -hmm. So it, it is becoming more prevalent yes. and I think 
uh, consumers are more aware that that option is available. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see more and more of that yeah. because it really does make a difference in people's healing. Right, and they're also introducing massage therapy into some of the yes. hospitals as well. Yes. So it seems as if the doors are opening very slowly yes. for you know integrative medicine instead of our ways the right way and the only way. Right. But to also bring in the holistic mind, spirit, and body. Right. And looking at that person as a whole. Yes. And what is your goal to integrate both? Western medicine and Oh, absolutely. Yes. I see it as very complementary. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is an integrative approach. You need both. Yes. To heal, you need both. And so it really is, my my goal is to educate and, and empower people to manage their energy. Yeah. And ask for the things they need mm -hmm. to have the best outcomes. Right. Because that is the end result, is the patient. Exactly. You know, and right. if they get back a good quality of life, then they'll go and tell two people, and then they'll tell two people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, we have a few minutes left, Debbie, and you are on Knowledge for Wellness, so I'd really like for you to throw out a little bit of knowledge to my viewers, if you could, please. Okay, great. Yeah. I would like to, to say that at the end of the day, you own your energy, and you can create the results you want if you know more about the more conscious you can be of your energy, the more you can make choices that serve you. And, and by serving you, um, you'll have a ripple effect on the people that that you touch. I would encourage you to learn as much as you can, experience it, play with it, join me for classes on that, uh, just empower yourself. Yeah, and also get educated as well. Yes, yes. okay. Right. Well, thank you for this wonderful oh, insight. Thank you, Tina, I really appreciate being here. Yeah, it's been a delight, thanks thank so you. much. If you have any questions, I'd like to contact Sapphire Catalyst please contact Debbie at 612-987-6595 or through the internet at Deborah at sapphirecatalyst.com and Deborah would be more than happy to address your questions. And if you get a minute, you can tune in to my other shows at Knowledge for Wellness being televised throughout the Twin City area. And you can see my previous shows on YouTube. And if you get a minute, you can visit my website at www.knowledgeforwellness.com or connect with me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. And the mission of Knowledge for Wellness is to inform viewers on health issues, to expose, educate, and make viewers aware, to enhance themselves and their loved ones for a better quality of life. And I sure hope we have provided you with more knowledge to benefit you and your loved ones. So remember, health is wealth. So until next time, be well and goodbye. Thanks again, Debbie. Thank you. Over time you've healed so much in me and I am living proof that although my darkest hour had come, your light could still shine through. 